Hello Aquarius and welcome to your tarot card reading for September 2023. Welcome back to the channel everyone. Thank you all so much for being here. For those of you who are new, my name is Jane. So these tarot card readings you can watch for either your sun, moon, or rising sign depending on whichever resonates with you the most. If you are here for love specifically, you are also welcome to check out your Venus sign as well. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Hello Aquarius and welcome to your September reading. So let's go ahead here and take a look, see what comes through for you for the month. What does Aquarius need to know for September here? Well, this card doesn't really come out that often. Um, I'm kind of seeing, kind of seeing you looking down on something. When I say looking down, it means it feels like a really high perspective, which means you're probably not going to get that bothered by stuff this month. <laughs> you're looking at everything from a much bigger picture, looking down and seeing everything for the kind of minuscule thing that it actually is. I don't think you're going to get worked up. I don't think you're going to allow other people or certain situations to upset you. I think you feel very calm this month. You're willing to go with the flow. One of the things with, you know, eighth house transits, right? We've got sun in the eighth house in Virgo. We have a Mercury retrograde in Virgo as well. So there is a transformative quality that can often come through here. There's also a lot of relational stuff that happens too, right? This is a house of shared resources. So there's a lot of, you know, emotional and financial stuff that can come through. But regardless of whatever hiccups or issues you have to confront, I don't see you being upset, right? You kind of just take a step back, you take a breather, you think about it for a minute, and then you make proper decisions moving forward. Um, it feels kind of... To me, the word cold is coming through. Now, I'm not saying you're a cold person, but it just is like a, a cool approach to everything, which is nice. You know, it, it feels natural. It feels good. It feels in control. So that's a really good way to start off the reading. So let's see what else comes out. We're going to start off with an Oracle card today. So what else or what does the universe really need from Aquarius this month? take the lead. Okay. I really like that because you, you seem to be in that kind of mindset. You know, you're not getting worked up. You are thinking logically, you are assessing and analyzing and thinking things through. And if there are people in your life who are acting, you know, kind of emotionally or irrationally, you're probably going to be the one that says, all right, let's just calm down. Let's think, let's talk it through. Let's have a conversation. Let's make some decisions and let's do whatever we need to do to, to get through this. You know, the stag spirit is also very gentle and graceful. And there is kind of that air of majesty, you know, so this is about self-respect having that self-respect and uh, having really firm boundaries and telling people no when that you need to say no, but also not being mean. I don't really see Aquarius being mean in any of this. It feels, you know, caring and understanding and compassionate toward others, but also not at the price of what it is that you need. So I don't think there's anything else left for me to say. Let's just pull out the next card. I really like that though. We'll see if that comes out. There's more context there with the more with the rest of the cards. So in the environment, nothing is yet set in stone. I actually really like that card for Virgo season, a mutable moon, of course. I really do like it because it's that reminder that nothing is so final. That's why probably you're not getting so upset. Virgo season is one of those times, right? It's a mutable time. We've got four of these a year, Virgo, Sag, Pisces, and Gemini, but especially Gemini and Virgo, I would say, they're really strong transitionary times. And because of the transition uh, and the mutability and flexibility and agility and all these wonderful traits that we can, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, <coughs> kind of tap into, we can't really say for sure like how things are really going to turn out because we may be redirected or we may have a little bit of a detour that we need to take. 
and things may be put on hold, other things may be reprioritized, and that's just kind of the way life goes sometimes. So nothing is final, nothing is definitive. And with the stag spirit, and everything I just said about that first one, you know, you might need to be the one that kind of reminds everyone else of that. It's nothing to get worked up about because we don't really know. We don't really have that foresight right now and that things are still malleable. And this is, this is one of the reasons why uh, Virgo season is such an important time of year because this is when our teeny tiny daily decisions that we make in the really small scale, like what we eat versus do we exercise? Do we scroll on our phone? Do we do that extra hour of work? Do we make those phone calls or not? Like, are we going to be lazy? Are we going to be productive? Like, what are we going to do, right? Those types of decisions on an hour to hour basis of our day kind of determines a lot. So yeah, no, nothing is set in stone, but it's for that reason exactly that you do need to be more vigilant about how you live your life and the choices and the people that you spend your time with and all of that. Okay. But this is a good thing because you get to write your story. You get to write your story, how you want it to be. So not only are you taking the lead for others, but you're taking lead the lead for yourself as well. All right, Aquarius, what else do you need to know here? Ten of coins, wheel of fortune, and okay, well, this isn't really what I would say to anyone else, <laughs> any other sign. It's not really what I see Virgo season as, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. The cards say what they say. Whenever I get that two of wands, it's kind of like a manifestation card, a visualization card rather. And it's important for us to take a step back when this card comes out and really consider and think about what it is we want our life to be in the big picture. Even with the 10 of coins, I often say this card is like your vision board. So you, the viewer of this reading, get to inject your vision into this 10 of coins. So what does your life look like both materialistically in terms of what you want to have and just in terms of who you want to be as a person, your character. Okay. This with this, with the wheel of fortune in the middle tells me that things are likely to start rolling. If you have a clear idea, right? Nothing is yet set in stone, meaning this future of yours, this desired manifested life is neither going to happen. And it's also not, not going to happen. Does that make sense? Hold on. Did I make that sense? It either is or it isn't going to happen. It's not set in stone yet. So this is why your daily decisions are so important. If you don't have a clear idea, now I'm not saying you have to know exactly, but it does help to understand why you're doing the things you're doing. It helps to have that anchor, that purpose, you know, I'm looking at this two of wands and I just feel so much hope, but I'm also feeling distance. Like right now you may be feeling far away from your desired life and you may be thinking about it. That may create resistance, which may be problematic. Think about the 10 of coins, all coins really, and this is actually a Virgo card. Numbers eight, nine, and 10 are associated with the mutable sign of that element. So mutable earth is Virgo. So coins really are about slow progress. This is not a fast energy. I think it's going to be important for Aquarius to take time out of the equation. All right. To, to not set any rules for how quickly things need to get done. What matters is that you do them. What matters is that you're aligned. What matters is that you wake up in the morning and you feel excited to go do that thing. And hopefully that thing is aligned with this vision. So it'll help you get there. 
I actually love this two of wands with what everything I said about having that higher perspective here in that bigger picture, because it really is the bigger picture that's going to make everything manageable and digestible. You know, like if you're sitting there looking at your vision board right now and you're thinking, how the heck am I ever going to get that stuff? And then it just kind of makes you want to sit on the couch and pout because it's so far off. This is that moment where you just say, you know what? I'm just going to do like this one little thing today and be completely okay with that. And that's you taking the lead, right? That's you exhibiting that self-respect. That's you exhibiting that sense of value, not only value towards self, but value toward the goal itself, you know? And it's, it's a way for you to communicate with the universe, right? When we take action with things, and we show up for ourselves and it doesn't have to be hardcore, right? I'm like, I'm definitely not a hustle person by any stretch of the imagination. So I'm not sitting here preaching hustle culture, unless that's totally your vibe. Cause some people are naturally wired for that kind of thing. And that's great. But if it's not your vibe, it's not your vibe, right? But it really is about showing up and showing up in a caring way. For some reason that stag spirit, like it feels so caring and it feels so gentle. If you can show up in a caring and gentle way to do the certain things that you know are going to help get you closer, then that's a really successful month. And that wheel of fortune, right? This is, this pays attention. The wheel of fortune kind of watches. It watches and it responds. So when you do something, the wheel of fortune is going to provide either an opportunity or it's going to open a door. It's going to present someone into your life. It's going to bring in that phone call, bring in that email, whatever it is. This is a breadcrumb effort. And we have breadcrumbs with the 10 of coins. Slow and steady wins the race, but also responsive win wins the race too. You have to be responsive. You have to be accepting of the things that the universe brings right? Because if you have a goal and then someone shows up and offers you an opportunity that aligns with that goal, but you say no, well, then you've shut the door on yourself. Okay. So pay attention to how you live your life. Pay attention to the choices. And that's a common theme. I'm saying that to pretty much everyone right now. So that's not necessarily Aquarius specific, but especially with the nothing is yet set in stone, that's even more important for you. Okay. All right. So let's see what else. Beautiful. So the seven of cups in the center here does indicate a period or a, you know, you, maybe you're a little confused. Maybe you have multiple routes to take. Maybe you don't know which things to prioritize. You know, there, there are a lot of options nowadays for a lot of different things. It's not, nothing is like you only have one way to do it. I really would not overthink it. This is when like bigger picture is more important because this is when you start getting a little too worked up, right? We get into that seven of cups, cups mode when we get too worked up about how something is going to come to be because we, we so desperately want to choose the right path and often we associate the right path as being the path of least resistance and the path that's fastest. Okay. It's not always the case. We want so badly to choose the right path that sometimes we stay paralyzed and we end up doing nothing. And then we dream and we fantasize about our 10 of coins, 10 of cups life. I'm not saying you're not already happy with a lot of things in your life. I just want to be very clear about that. It's possible for us to be content and to be appreciative and to be exceptionally grateful, but still want to expand. That's the nature of the universe itself is one of expansion. So it's not that you're ungrateful. It's just that there's more that you're wanting to experience. There's something deeper, something, something that calls you, you know? And yet there is that paralysis there that says, well, which way is the right way? Because there's a lot of visualization up here in his top row. There's a lot of thinking and dreaming and all of that, but it's not really going to mean a lot until you take a step. 
Some of you are already taking steps and that's great. I would urge you, if you already are taking steps, I would urge you to take more challenging steps this month. Okay, to do the things that are a little bit harder and to do the things that require a little bit more courage or will. Here's the magician with that initiation. Okay, you're working with a ton of potential. You're working with, um, I don't know, a a great idea or a powerful enough desire because we always have a desire for the 10 of coins, 10 of cups. Desire is not really the problem. It's execution. This is not a time to be perfectionist. I know it's Virgo season. So even that much more, we have to kind of like really hone in on that message. It's not a time to be a perfectionist. It's not a time to think that you're just going to go do it once and it's going to be perfect and everything's going to work out perfectly. And in your logical mind, you know that. Logically, that makes sense. And anyone that you sit down and have a conversation with, no one thinks they're going to do it perfectly the first time on the straight with a straight shot. But sometimes our rational mind and our irrational mind, you know, they don't always see it the same way. And it's the irrational mind that probably is keeping you here in this state of paralysis of some kind. But we have the take the lead with the magician. It says you have to do something. Okay, if it's learning something. I, actually, I don't know that, I don't see a lot of learning right now. I mean, there's always learning. That's kind of just life. But this is really is more about getting your hands dirty, getting in the trenches and making something happen. You know, it's using your hands to execute, using your words, using your requests, right? Paying people to do something, hiring people, whatever the case is, to get it done. The magician can be kind of like this open floodgate if we want it to be. Most people, it's kind of like a start-stop energy. We get one, we get a magician card, or we get an ace of some kind, and we, oh, we got that, and then we kind of try to do something with it. And then sometimes it kind of peters out and then we kind of have to sit and wait for the next one. But once you get that flow going, it's kind of like a meditation. Like sometimes it can be a little rocky at first and your mind is going all over the place and you're itching and you're kind of readjusting and you can't really sit still, but then you have like a moment where things just kind of click and change. And that's when your mind can kind of do what it does during a meditation, you know, and that's kind of that open flow. The magician can be the same thing as well. We can have that open channel consistently, but in order to have that, we have to get the momentum going as we see with the wheel of fortune. Okay. So what else, what else for Aquarius for September last row, queen of coins, Seven of Wands. Hold on, sorry. Let me get those looking a little better. I think it would be in your best interest to be honest with yourself about where you're feeling the resistance. Okay? Um, Now, I I keep looking at this card and... It, again, it did feel very cool. None of this feels like an emotional roller coaster. I definitely don't see any of that. It does feel like you have a lot of mind power right now, or, or my, like you can control your own mind a lot right now, which can be good because then you don't try to convince yourself to go do something that you don't really you know, need to do or that's not that important and you're just distracting yourself. You know, you're not doing anything like that. It is going to be important for you to know that other people are watching. Your friends, your family, your children, you know, people are watching you make something happen. I'm not trying to put all the pressure on you or anything, but I don't think you realize how inspirational you actually are as a person, how inspirational you are as you live your life, especially when you have successes. And this leadership is not just about leadership in your own life, but you, 
I hope you know that you are leading people, that you do have a legacy. Not, not all of us really think that we have some type of a legacy, really, because we always think of that as being money, right? But when you inspire someone, when you get someone to change their mind or you get someone to see something differently or you inspire them to follow their dream or whatever, you inspire them to get up and do something about their life, that's a beautiful legacy. And this is one of those rare instances where I would say, live like people are watching. You know, live like people are, usually we say live like, or dance like no one's watching kind of thing. It's kind of our saying, but this is live like people are watching. People are watching you, because I think they are. I think they're paying attention, and you do inspire them. And I look at this queen of coins, and she's so focused on her coin here, sometimes she doesn't realize all the beautiful flowers that are blooming all around her just simply because she chose to water her own garden, right? And maybe there are so many things that you're doing that is helping someone else to bloom. This is kind of an indirect leadership I'm feeling. And it is soft and it is beautiful and it is gentle, but it does require something from you. I think Virgo season always requires something from us. It always requires us to, I always call it the sign of self-mastery. You've probably heard me say that before. If you've been with me for any period of time, I say it all the time. Virgo is the sign of self-mastery. And this is where we go in and we, we don't let ourselves get away with things because we know that certain behaviors are going to be better for us. This is where we improve our life by improving our habits it sounds so boring and mundane, and yet it is so critical. It's one of the main foundations of this life because that's how life is lived. It's lived on an hour-to-hour -hour basis, right? It's lived on a choice-by-choice -choice basis. So we have the Seven of Wands. Seven of Wands with the Seven of Cups right above it. There is a fight. This is the resistance that you need to acknowledge. You know, what is it? Is it you... I don't know, like for me, quitting coffee was always like such a big thing, right? I really wanted to quit coffee. I was definitely a coffee addict, 100%. And that was one of the hardest things. Like I had so much resistance because I didn't really want to do it, even though with my health stuff, I was like, oh, I have to do it, you know? For me, that was a long time ago. I was just using it as an example. But it's like quitting coffee was such an important part of my journey. This may be the, just that resistance, because like, it may, may be that you know something's good for you, and you know that there's a right path for you, but there's a fight in you against it because it, it really does mean you have to change or you have to sacrifice something or you have to give up something or you have to move on from something. And maybe you're fighting because you just, maybe it's sooner than you thought. Maybe you just aren't mentally prepared to do it you know, whatever the case may be. But I think this is a war that you have to have with yourself a little bit. You have to go back and forth because in order to choose the quote unquote right path, I guess that's not really the, what I really want to say, to choose the best path, I guess. Um, in order to do that, you have to come to terms with thing that's keeping you from doing it in the first place. You have to confront it. You have to face it. And you have to really ask yourself what it is about that thing that you like so much or that's so addicting or that's so hard to move on from. What is it? But once you have that conversation with yourself and you have that, you know, I guess we call it a come to Jesus moment, you'll be free from it. And uh, I look at this four of wands and I see Aquarius being really solid. This is a car, you know, there's a lot of celebration that comes through the four of wands. It's solid, it's secure, a lot of security in, in a lot of different ways, right? Family, emotional, financial, all that type of stuff. This is clearly aligned here with the magician and the two of wands. Um, this is one of those cases of just let yourself have it. <laughs> just let yourself have that goal. Let yourself have that success. Let yourself have that love. 
and you can find so much beauty in this process, okay? So it's not the most dramatic month, I think, which is a good thing, but let's go ahead and pull out the clarifiers anyway and see what else comes out. So for those of you who are new, I'm gonna pull out a bunch of new cards and we're gonna talk for another 25 to 30 minutes in the comprehensive rating. And the link for that is in the description box down below. So if you wanna join, you are more than welcome. So let's take a look here at the stag spirit. What else does Aquarius need to know about the stag spirit here? Three of Wands. Okay. Seven of coins, a lot of sevens. All right, and environment, in, or in the environment position, what does Aquarius need to know? We have the six of coins. Another magician card. And six of wands, beautiful. Floor the ten of coins. Six of cups. Nine of swords. Queen of coins. Strength, four of coins. Ooh, another Wheel of Fortune, double down. Three of Swords, another Six of Coins, and a Queen of Wands. I love the Queen of Wands in this story. Page of Swords, Page of Wands. Ooh, Ten of Coins again. This is a really exciting reading, Aquarius. <laughs> a Knight of Swords, Nine of Cups, Ace of Cups, Queen of Swords, whoops, hold on, Two of Cups, Five of Wands, For the Queen of Coins, we have the World card. Oh, beautiful. I love that empress there, the hanged man. Yeah, there's definitely something about time and not worrying about time. Okay, a lot of knights. Here, event. Three of coins, the moon, and last card, we have eight of coins. All right, so this is where we're going to pick up in the comprehensive. So if you want to join, you are more than welcome. Hope you have an amazing September Aquarius, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.